The series starts with a woman in the streets. However, it doesn't seem that the woman belongs there as she isn't alone. She is with a newborn baby named Lu Xu whom she sings a lullaby. The woman gives the baby to another person and leaves. The baby has a walnut-shaped pendant. Fast forward, we see the boy has become a man taking care of his little sister, Lu Xu Ouyu, who wants to eat sweets at the fair. So you know they're gonna be hella expensive. Especially for Lu Xu who is not financially stable, that he caves in for that kawaii face. Then they go to enjoy a fire show. While making their way through the hordes, Lu Xu bids too close to comfort facing the flames, but instead of flinching back his mind goes somewhere else and his necklace starts glowing. Yet nobody takes note as they are amazed by the fire show. Later the duo goes backstage to see the man behind the show and asks him how it's done. However inside they come across some men in black taking the blondie against his will. Beyond scared straight, Lu Xu tells the fellas that they were just looking for the toilet when they got caught. One of the men tells them that they are a firefighting group and the fire show is not licensed, that's why they are here and bring the fire show guy for investigation. It's a silly excuse, Lu knows it and they know it, so not wanting to go through the hassle of dealing with him. The guy tells them the direction of the toilet, and everyone goes their way. Back at home we learn that Lu Xia Oyu is not Lu Xu's biological sister. They were from the same orphanage, now they live together as a sister and a brother. When Lu Xu goes to the store to buy some food, he gazes at the face of god Truk Kun sending him flying headfirst to the rock-solid ground. The walnut starts sparkling on his neck, lifting his body higher and higher. His body begins to somewhat transform as we see from his tissues, twisting, glowing, and changing. On the other side, the man behind the god is freaking out, believing he has killed the young man, so when he goes to check on him, Lu falls as if nothing was happening. But then our boy opens his eyes, piss-wanting revenge, money as a form of compensation. Seeing this, the truck driver gets frightened thinking it's his ghost and flees away while numbers keep ticking over his head. Thus, Lu Xu goes back to his original task, buying some noodles, but the task seems harder than usual since the shopkeeper is also frightened and numbers appear above his head. But the main man doesn't overthink it and gets back home to take a shower. After washing himself up, Lu looks for any wounds or signs of the accident but finds nothing. The only thing he notices is a sparkling sign on his palm, which he concludes it as being a sign of his awakening superpowers. After further theorizing and thinking, Lu realizes his power is derived from people's negative emotions. A digital circle system appears in front of the self-proclaimed Demon King and like any growing healthy young adult, he dives into it head first without any care in the world, he starts pressing some buttons in what seems to be a wheel of fortune. Although he kept losing and dropping his points fast, Lu manages to secure a win and an apple appears from thin air, he bites it and instantly feels comfortable as well as energized prompting him to play more and lose more points, until he wins a letter active by singing the kid's lullaby, which takes him on a journey through space and time to somewhere representing what seems like Lu's inner soul power map. After looking a bit into it, he goes back to reality and joins his little sister at the dinner table, only to leave again upon seeing a fire has occurred in their area. When he climbs to the rooftop to take a look, he finds the same men from the fair jumping from rooftop to rooftop like ninjas but with drip. They hear Lu Xu and approach him. What are you doing here? They ask. Lu Xu lies to them saying he's picking up dried radishes. Although the man recognizes him from before and doesn't believe his excuse, they send him home after not picking up what they call fluctuations. When Lu Xu gets back to his little sister, a sudden bump is heard. A man is laying in front of their house. Turns out it's the fire show guy. While Lu Xu and his sister are discussing and lingering around what to do with the guy, numbers appear above his head. Lu realizes he is conscious and starts teasing him for some points, even after the man wakes up, like the demon king Lu is, he continues messing with the guy. Fed up, the fire guy loses his temper and grabs Lu Xu's hand to roast him just like how our boy did. But nothing happens, so the man swallows his pride, calls it a prank and leaves after Lu milks every last negative emotion from him. Lu's sister starts to question him, so he hints about his superpowers, but doesn't show her. When the main man goes to his room, he opens the digital system and buys what I think is a mushroom loaded with DMT because what he experienced after swallowing looks like something straight up from the Joe Rogan experience. After that, he can lift his bed easily. But sadly, there is no rest for the wicked as Lu Xu is responsible for all the household duties and expenses. Thus, he takes some eggs to the bazaar to sell them, something his other classmate the quote-unquote class leader teases him about, yet Lu not only doesn't mind it but uses it to sell all his eggs and farm as many points from the class leader as he can. In class, Lu learns that more and more people are getting awakened, and that there are levels to it, A being the highest, while F being the lowest, and as you guessed it, in true high school anime fashion, our man turns out to be in the lowest rank. Just like his classmate that was just awakened is holding a teacher on the roof threatening to throw him if the men in black get any closer. 
Incredibly, Lou's gears start going and his devilish side comes to light as he steps forward and reminds the kid that even if he is a minor, he will be prosecuted and starts reciting the Chinese crime laws one by one, making everyone who went up to see some action miserable, farming points and distracting the kids, so that the men in black can take down the little rascal with some impressed judo techniques. After all is said and done, Lou heads back to the classroom and sees some nurses standing there. They want to take some blood samples for inspection, so he gets nervous as he does not want them to know about his superpowers. When he tries to weasel his way out of it, Lou gets stopped by a nurse built like a mountain leaving him no choice. Back at home, Lou finds his little sister down with a fever due to her trying to wash his cloth in the cold. Therefore, he steps out and opens his magic screen to play on the Wheel of Fortune till he gets the good fruit for her to get better. And indeed, it worked as a charm. Her fever went away as soon as she took it. Then they kept repeating the cycle over and over till he gives her a bag of fruits making her realize that her brother indeed was awakened. But her excitement turned to anger when the man starts mentioning that she needs to do her studies. The next day, it is announced at school that there will be a special class for special students with a special teacher. It turns out the special teacher is the man in black. His name is Shifei. Several students get chosen among them Lu Xu shocking the points out of them. Soon after, a new student arrives named Jiang Shuti, and immediately gets mistaken for a girl. So you know our boy is going to use it to his advantage and farm some point from his new buddy, who also turns out to be in the same special class Shifei is teaching. The class teaches the basics of fighting and leveling up. He then explains that potassium alloy is a liquid metal that can detect human blood against the reaction rate with the aura of heaven and earth which is commonly referred to as qualification. When potassium comes into contact with the blood of people with potential for spiritual practice, it will change from silver to black, the darker the color, the higher the qualification. Based on the darkness, the qualification can be divided into six levels. A, B, C, D, E, and F. After the class, the qualification levels of everyone in this special class group will be published. The teacher also stated that the level of the qualification doesn't determine their future achievements, but their hard work is what does. Lu Xu's qualifications were F, putting him last in the class. However, there is a reason behind that being before taking the blood test. All that Lu Xu had eaten was the refining fruit, so he thinks that the qualifications measured are relatively low which can be good too as he doesn't trust his new teachers that much. Speaking about the devil fruit, his stock of fruit ends and so he starts to seek other rewards and ends up with a stinky tofu that attracts the attention of his sister. When he continues to play with his sister at his side, Lu finally wins something different, another sheet of paper, but this one is dark blue. It resonates with the sister, and she finds herself in space just like what happened to our boy. When she comes back, she tells him that she is awakened. After that, Lu goes to bed and reflects on his day, that's when he comes up with the idea of selling the stinky tofu to earn money. Thus, atop the morning, he heads out, and on his way, he meets the grandpa living next door with Aunt Lin, who is having sword practice. The old G suggests he take some sword practice lessons, but Lu refuses, earning some points. He later earns some more from the repulsive smell of the tofu driving the people away, but one brave soul decides to try and instantly falls in love with it, attracting the attention of others who also try the stinky dish, which turns out to be a mega success, earning him a good amount of money. Over time, he keeps going at it, earning money from the tofu and negative points from the smell, which he uses to buy more mushrooms and practice in the other realm till he was able to break through the star nebula first layer in his power map, which in turn unlock a cool-ass sword that he can control with his mind. Back at school, they start to practice with a spiritual stone. It has a lot of energy in it, and it's a resource for cultivation. Lu Xu uses the spiritual stone that doesn't seem to be enough for him as his celestial map seems too much to handle with one measly standard stone. So the next day, Lu asked Jiang what he experienced if he can say the same thing when questioned in class. Speaking about in-class activities, the class leader challenges our boy to an arm wrestling match knowing he is just an F rank. Lu gladly accepts it and wins the match in tones of points after embarrassing the leader and annoying the classmates by telling them the leader has helped him to awaken. When the trap asks him about the awakening incident during lunch, Lu uses it further tease the boys and farm their negative energy. He then asks the trap if he knows anything about Shifei and others, to which the boy reveals that they work in Earth Network. Above the Earth Network is the Heavenly Network, the members of which are very few. At night, Lu Xu and his sister are at home chilling, when all of a sudden, he senses a strong aura. It belongs to a guy who we will be referring to as the Chinese Aaron Yeager because, why not? After showing respect to the old G at his doorstep, Aaron proceeds to enter the household, where the man is seen sitting in the dark with a fan in hand like a boss. He pours a cup of tea to the young man who says, Master Li, you are truly a generous person. 
Further adding, the Earth and Heaven Network needs a talented person like you to maintain world peace. But the old man refuses to join back as there is a belief that he who joins the association can't run for office. Post-puberty, Aaron respects his decision and hopes one day they won't be enemies. He finishes the conversation before leaving by saying, the director of the local association can only be him. Seeing the amount of respect given to the old G by the Heavenly Network, Lou decides he needs to learn more about his neighbor, and thus reconsiders the decision to sword practice with him. The next day, people in school gossip that Sayo Kingchi is the fastest practitioner of the current special class, and it seems that every time our boy crosses path with her something in him ticks. Something our boy thinks about when he gets back home to find his sister is acting kinda like him and earning some point. He then figures his sister's map is connected to his, then he gets notifications about how much she angered the old G. Both realize this and starts milking the points out of the old G. Soon after, the little demon leaves the grandpa and Lou to practice the sword. The G grabs a regular piece of paper and tells him that everything can cut. He then proceeds to infuse the paper, with Chakra turning it into a razor-sharp blade that can cut the ground and the wall in front, which amazes Lu Shu. Grandpa's strength and wisdom inspire the main man and he starts to practice his hockey mastering technique. Although Sensei notes he knows nothing about the way of the sword, Lu has a talent for it and can come a long way very fast, as was evident from his skyrocket improvement. After the lesson ends, he asks Lu if he would like to take more responsibility one day if he has greater power. Lu replies no, something the old man understands and respects. The next day comes and with it one of the Heaven Network officers who tells his old mentor, there are signs of reappearance regarding the ruins in the various locations of this country. Even the ruins themselves are also an inseparable part of our country. Hope the association don't interfere on opening day. Further adding, you can strike me back with a single slash of the sword. Nothing can hold you back. And there's something more. The last seat of the Heavenly Network is always blank. Looking forward to the day when we can cooperate with the association and we long for world peace. Then he leaves after Lou's arrival. Lou remarks, isn't that an important figure in the network? To which the old man answers that he's just a level B commoner. Then the grandpa gives Lu Shu potassium alloy to test his qualifications. Lu tests both his and the little cutie. His turns into a star image resembling his celestial map while his sister turns pitch black just like a wormhole. Needless to say, there's nothing about that on the record, indicating his power level, although can be compared to others, cannot be measured in the standard ways, so he decided to keep the results a secret and goes to bear the flasks. The old man appears from behind and asks him about the result, so he lies to Grandpa telling him they are still F. Doubtful, the G leaves him. After that, Lu Xu practices his superpowers and it turns out that the second layer Nebula Star gives the ability to protect oneself with a sparkly, ultra-instinct kinda layer. Anyways, Lu Xiaoyu also breaks through the Star Nebula, but it's the first layer for her. And it turns out she can feel the energy of a recently dead creature around her and can control it like ants and birds. To test how big she can go, Lu Xu takes her to the stable to practice her new skill with pigs. She manages to summon a pig figure that appears to be angry which is understandable, we too would be pissed if we were killed for bacon. That said, the pig's problems are about to multiply on a whole new level, as our mad lad to his sister's core first punches it to see if the dark soul feels the same, which in turn raises the question why in Lord's name he would know how it feels to punch a pig. Anyhow, the pig seems to feel and bleed like a regular live one, but it acts differently and freaks out when Lou pulls the soul dagger out of his head ending the little piggy resurrection arc in a messy way. Naturally, seeing this, the little girl gets upset, so Lou promises to make it up for her. But then the siblings sense something happening in the city, so they move out to see what is going down, only to see his new teacher, with his men trying to capture a level D and two of his underlings. Shefei stands as he reflects fire shots one after the other. He then dodges the D-rank jump and continues to maneuver through the earthbender shenanigans. When the police arrive, the thugs leave with smug on their faces. Lu Xu and his sister were watching the fight, but he sends her home as he wanted to follow them, and it was too dangerous. Cornered inside a building like rats, the underlings voice their concern that they can't keep running anymore and they should surrender. Their leader says there is no peaceful surrender now and that they have two of the network men reassuring his men that he will take them out of there. However, it wasn't the grand escape the underlings had in their mind as their fearless leader grabs them from the back and knocks them unconscious. He then runs for it using their bodies like shields and obstacles to slow the network. That said, one of the agents managed to stab him with his blood sword thing. Down on his knees, the level D brute has no other option but to fight his way out. Yet at that moment, they notice a man sitting on top of them, mincingly. As usual, he tries to talk his way out, but it only manages to trigger the numbers out of them. Not knowing who the man in blue is, Sensei Shifei orders his men to catch Lu. 
who uses this opportunity to show them how far he came with all that practice, and it was indeed pretty far as he was way too flexible, strong, and agile than the network officers. After finishing with the ladies, Lou comes face to face with the big dog who seems to be confident in his abilities to take on a teenager, with a blue aura glowing around him. This confidence soon turned to confusion when he powers up and matches the guy's strength blow to blow, but unbeknown to that class D sword practitioner, the young boy has a trick up his sleeve, or rather a dagger that goes through the guy's arm and then kills him. With nothing left to do, Lu Xu goes back home and takes his sister out to see if her ability with the dead creatures can work on an awakened D rank, so after making sure the area is clear with a spirit bird, they go back to the battlefield to store his soul for the next day as she was tired at the moment. On the other side, the upper party learns about the fight, but they don't know who the demon in blue is. At 1 a.m. exactly, Lu Xiaoyu wakes up in excitement to tell her big bro that she managed to control the dead Class D practitioner's body. Also, it seems she found the place where they hid the money through the fragments of this person's memory. Lu then cheers her up by telling her they will buy the house for sure in the future the right way. The next morning, Lu Xu goes to school and talks to Jiang Shui, who says that lately, scientists found that after an awakened person's death, most of the overflowing energy can be detected. This is also related to the recent emergence of a large number of antiparticle substances. There are strange changes in the world including a massive revival of superpowers. It is called spiritual energy restoration. Animals and plants in various places also experience changes. He also gives him information about the blessed land which is a place full of spiritual energy. Soon after, all the students head to the courtyard to welcome their new principal. Class B from Heavenly Network, Yi Shao Li, who seems to be a very irresponsible mentor. He announces that soon all of the students will join the Heavenly Network and assume their responsibilities. Thus, the students are going to be distributed spiritual stones based on qualifications. Class C qualification, 1 stone, Class B, 2 stones, Class A, 10 stones, awakened ones get 2 stones every month. And guess who is known as a quote unquote awakened? Yep, it's our boy Lu, but he's more interested in the stones selling value than their practical value. So he talks with his homie to find a buyer on the black market, which he does selling them for 120 thousands each. As the day goes on, the chabby boy goes to visit the old G to ask him if he knows the guy responsible for defeating the D rank, to which the G responds, no. And before he leaves, he also tells him about a strange phenomenon about two skeleton corpses that can run, jump, and push people. He states that the grandpa will get the promised medicine, regardless if he joins them or not as an appreciation for his old contributions. Lu Xu returns home with a gift for his little sister. It's a brand new phone. Moreover, he bought the house with the money earned from the spiritual stones and they won't be kicked out anymore. However, their happiness is cut short when Lu Xu gets a call from his classmate, telling him they need to be at school ASAP. The students get taken somewhere in the mountains. They don't have any idea what's going on. Jiang Shui says that ruins will open soon and they are responsible for perimeter security. They don't even know what the ruins actually are, but what they do know is that the ruins appeared suddenly after the big changes in the world, and there are ruins all over the world that attract many masters fighting over something within it, such as medicine and magic weapons. There's also something very important, which is called the Formation Eye. If someone got the Formation Eye, the entire ruins will be lost as it's the most valuable item of all the ruins. Only one ruin has ever been opened in this country before. Upon arriving at the camp, Shifei warns them to keep today's action a secret, if not, there will be a military punishment. Shefe further explains that they have brought them here to gain experience, as such they will be treated like soldiers, not students. The training begins right away, everyone gets handed a stone in order to go meditate, and of course, all the students are training except Lu Xu, who chose to bug the class leader to gain easy points. Later, Lu Xu practices alone and unlocks a new protective cover. It's breakfast time and the first dish of the morning is Lee's anger, as he wants to fight our boy for his non-stop teasing. But Shifei appears and says that a fight between fellow students and comrades is prohibited, so he tells them to solve their issues with a classic arm wrestling match and shake hands after. As expected, Lu Xu beats Lee for the second time. Impressed, Shifei offers Lu Xu to arm wrestle together. Lu Xu beats him too. Suddenly there's a fog and an emergency alarm starts telling everyone to leave. The students are frightened and they run down to the mountain. The fog is like a tornado and it sucks Lu Xu to a location that is unfamiliar to him. An axe is thrown at him by a zombie. Lu Xu protects himself and beats the zombie, but unfortunately more zombies start to get out from the ground in great numbers, so he runs away. While running he encounters some students who are afraid as hell. Zombies attack one of them and Lu Xu uses the axe to fight them back and protect the students. However, at some point a zombie manages to take the main man down. Struggling on the ground, Lu manages to break through that corpse's cold hold and cut its head in front of his schoolmates who decided not to help him. 
Thus, it was very understandable that he chose to leave them to look for his only true friend, the trap. Lu Xu wanders around the dangerous fields full of zombies when it gets dark, he decides to look for a place to hide. Suddenly, he sees a sparkling fire flying across the sky. He hits it and sees it's a fire flare. A student in a mountain gap is using them, but Lu Xu doesn't recognize him, and his name tag in the system is just a number tag. So he realizes this foreigner is a spy, and the flare shot came from a 3D printed disposable flare gun that can pass the Heavenly Network security checkpoint. They start to talk, but both are anxious and don't trust each other. Hence, they fake their identities in cities. Soon the boys run into a horde of zombies, a spy asks for the weapon, but Lu doesn't want to give it up. So he acts like a weak beta and runs away leaving the guy angry, and said they reunite yet again after the action settles down, the spy and Lu spend the night together. In the morning, Lu Xu gets hungry, so he tells his cavemate, he's going to take a leak and gets rotten tofu secretly, which makes the spy surprised. As Lu Xu starts to talk more and more, he makes the already hungry spy angrier, and just like that they start to fight. When Lu manages to throw the guy away, he loses his sword. Thus, he too uses the dagger up his sleeve, driving it into the back of the spy, finishing him. After that, Lu Xu continues his journey into the unknown till he reaches a green oasis, with clean running water, to quench his thirst and fresh apples. When he goes to grab one, some squirrels start to throw stones at him. It turns out he can also gain points from the negative emotions of animals in this realm as they have reached somewhat of emotional intelligence. That said, no chabby squirrel is going to stop our boy from getting these apples as they are not only good to eat, but also replenish strength and quench thirst. Later, he gets attacked by wolves with also feelings, so after he bugs them, Lu starts sprinting. The more he runs, the fitter his body becomes. He manages to get rid of the wolves and reunites with the student group he had left before. They are scared and hungry. Lu Xu takes out his apples and starts to eat in front of them, showing he doesn't even care about them. They are all angry at him. After getting some points, he gets up and is determined to find the formation eye. As Lu Xu continues his path, he encounters a zombie with a horse and a nice spear. Nice enough for our boy to take it, upsetting the zombie. Lu Xu then adds insult to injury by throwing him off the horse and running away as soon as the zombie homies arrive. They try to shoot him down with arrows as he makes his escape, but they fail, frustrating them as he is too agile, so they leave. Meanwhile, the network officers are camping on top of a mountain waiting for the horse troops to pass by and shoot their leader with a sniper. Unfortunately, the home team mistakes the zombie with no spear in hand for the leader not knowing he had a Lu incident earlier. Therefore, when they shoot him, instead of the zombies turning to clueless NPCs, the actual leader notices them and orders his men to fire back. After running away, the home team regroups and assists the station, concluding it will be very hard to smite the leader now as the element of surprise is no longer with them. Or so they thought. Suddenly they see someone hidden in the rocks, it's Lu Xu, who is very playful with zombies. Soon a violent fight starts between Lu Xu and the zombies. Lu Xu easily uses his wide range of weapons to cut their heads off and beats them all. Meanwhile, Li Xiaoyu is alone at home and mad at Lu Xu for being gone so long. Back on the battlefield, Lu Xu keeps getting his loot collection bigger and bigger. Following the path made up of dead zombies, the home team prepares for the next fight. While they position themselves to attack the zombie leader, Lu Xu strikes first from nowhere with the zombie spears that he infused with his power. Seeing the fight has started the officers, unlike the first group Lu ran into earlier, Hall asks to help him. But like last time, Lu doesn't need any help and finishes work as soon as they arrive. The officer tries to compliment our boy for his power and skill. But Lu's only care is to pick that loot up. With so many weapons in hand, the Silver Tongue Demon King announces that he is selling all the weapons, and since most don't have cash on them, he comes up with a trading system instead of cash. Although people are hesitant to buy until one brave soul comes forward to buy one, and just like that everyone soon followed, earning himself easy money, and of course, easy points. Now all dripped up and ready to continue moving, the home team along with Lu is leading the way walk toward the center of the ruins. As they get closer to the core area, the temperature drops and the students get tired, so they camp at a safe spot for the night. While admiring his new bling, Lu feels hungry so he grabs himself one super apple. He then notices that the network men are beaten down quite well, so he shares his apples with them without any compensation, and as soon as they take a bite, they feel their strength is back, their thirst is quenched, and their hunger is gone. Seeing this, the students ask for apples, but our boy refuses pointing out that it would be a waste on them, and it would be better if they are consumed by the men who are going to risk their lives for them. That said, his moral values fastly fly out of the window when one guy starts talking Lu's language, aka money. Suddenly, some flying ghosts come and attack them, but as soon as they see Lu Xu's face resembling a monster, they flew away the same way they flew in, confusing the home team. The lads continue their path, reaching the core area. 
where they reunite with other people and share their adventures. Lou overhears a couple of kids talking about how the bay Lou used to cross paths with was very brave and protected everyone and unlike him gave the weapons away for free to the students. Upon learning about the great feats she and Lou did, one of the masters in the Heavenly Network invites them to a meeting. He introduces himself as the new top officer till the B-ranked chabby boy gets back and tells him to follow his instructions. He takes a blood heart shaped sword using his blue energy which was a flying weapon that only C-class practitioners could conjure and sends the weapon to measure the depth of the hole in the floor. It turns out to be 100 meters deep and there's a cave. He says that the power of the ruins here is much stronger than anywhere else. Soon Master Lee arrives with an apple tree that he carried back to the cave just because the chabby squirrel kept bugging him. Lou sees the little fella sad that everyone is eating his apples, so he offers him one and they become buddies. Later at night, by checking the names of the people Lu Xu gained points, Lu sees that there are several spies there. Thus, he stayed awake when everyone slept a wise choice, as he was able to spot the spies diving in the pit except one who got held by our boy multiple times. Frustrated, the spy says, F it, and they start to fight. After confronting him for a bit, Lu screams, What are you doing, step bro? Everyone wakes up to check what kind of Sa's behavior is going down. Among them is Lee, who as soon as her Lu screams, process to manhandle the spy in a blink of an eye. Later after Lee tells the group they will be following the spies who he is positive won't be able to beat them to the eye, he goes to Lu and makes a 50-50 business cooperation with our boy. When another ruin opens, Lee will personally invite Lu since special class disciples cannot enter the ruins, and once he is in, Lu can do what he did so far earning lots of money for both parties. With business out of the way, Lee leads the way downstairs which was created by an earthbending Beatty. As soon as they reach the lowest point, they see the spies who are already dead. Lu Xu considers everything very strange, but they continue their march. After a while, a cave opens up and a bright light comes from it, as well as flying spirits. Li Yixiao uses his firepower to attack them, while others use their weapons to fight them back. Well, everyone other than Lu Xu whom the ghosts avoid because they are scared of his corpse dog that ends up eating well with every ghost our boy kills and absorbs. Soon after, lots of zombies appear with their leader who has a spear in his hand which Li dubs the Formation of the Eye. Therefore, he thinks that after seizing the spear, these ruins would instantly disappear along with everything inside it, from land to monsters. Thus, he attacks the leader, killing his horse. A fierce fight starts between the zombies and the people. At some point, Lu is going to be hit from a blind spot if it wasn't for his girl Sao stepping in. Some time passes, and Lu notices that the zombies are avoiding him because of the corpse dog, which sparks an idea inside that devious head of his, so he ends up leaving the battlefield and enters the castle without being noticed. After that, Lu Xu continues his exploring and opens a huge door, believing some nice items behind it are worth a buck. Meanwhile, the fierce fight outside continues. Now inside the zombie headquarters, Lu sees some huge statues with nicer spears than the zombies, so naturally he wants them. However, the figures move and show they are ready to duke it out. Hence, Lu pulls corpse dog, and as soon as they lay eyes on that cool dagger, the statues back up and stand still. Lu then proceeds to take their spears, upsetting the negative points out of them. After that, he enters another room, inside he finds a piece of paper that seems important. As he approaches it, the zombie leader still fighting Lee over the spear, senses that something is up, so he throws him the spear and immediately heads back inside. Lee realizes that what he is holding is not the formation eye so goes after him, but he gets stuck fighting the guards. The zombie leader approaches Lu Xu who was reaching for a golden seal, which is too precious for the zombie leader as it's the mountain and river seal. Out of surprise, Lu Xu drops it. Luckily though, he catches it last second and his body absorbed it, and with it, everything in the realm. The buildings, the people, and the zombies disappeared immediately flying away to the seal which was in Lu Xu's hand. Even Lu Xu himself disappeared from there. Incidentally, everyone else gets transferred to the city. The students register and drop off their weapons, everyone except the class leader, who looks depressed because Lu went messing making him sad as everyone believes he has died. And so the class leader volunteers to look for his body claiming they are related. The bittersweet scene then turns comedic when Lu arrives and shifts the mood teasing what now I presume is his brother. Speaking about siblings after being finished with the weapons, Lu Xu goes home to his sister. He is welcomed not only by his little sister who is extremely worried about him, but also by the old Ji and auntie. When he thanks for looking after his sister while he was gone, he also thanks the old Ji for his training as it helped in the ruin. Finally back to home sweet home, Lu Xu tells his sister about his adventures and shows her two pearls he got. The black one was from Corpse Dog absorbing the spirits and zombies, while the colorful one was from absorbing the spies, he then tells her that they can be used as food to power the spirits she can summon. Also, he hands her two last gifts, some apples from the ruin and of course, the chabby squirrel who gets frustrated seeing her eating his apples without sharing them with him. 
but then she wins him back with a potato chip and they become friends. Later, Lu Xu finds out that the seal of the mountain and river is a divine object that can observe the earth and that the aura there can be controlled. The only thing he needs to do is become stronger to gain access to the castle within. On the other side, two guys from the Heavenly Network think that the Formation I was taken by a spy, but they still don't have any proof. Moreover, they have already sent two members to the city to report any unusual flow of the aura. They also discuss the students stating that Lu Xu and Sao Qingxi are outstanding. One of them says that new ruins are opening soon. Further adding, northern gods, eastern gods, and western vows. Even the foundation and the network are working to step up the war effort. There's no need to wait for the next ruin. There will be a war between heaven and earth. Change is coming. Meanwhile, changes happen in the Liu household. The kids now have a new TV. And our boy is not stopping there as he wants to provide a better life for himself and his sister. And so he continues to explore his new superpower. Leaving us itching for another season to see what new overpowered abilities the sibling will get. Until then, subscribe and stay tuned for future updates. Bye.